Thank you so much, uh, Steve C. 700. Uh, you're always uh, uh, very well worthwhile. So thank you. Um, you say, just stop oil threaten people's lives unless their demands are, are met. Sound like terrorists to me. Um, I like the double R. It sounds a little bit like uh, Starmer's stammering this morning when he was asked again and again how he was going to fund his changes and couldn't quite bring himself to, um, to, to um, commit to funding public services. Uh, Comedy Gold, keep them coming, Tim. Well, yeah, uh, the point is, the, the big, I, I make a big distinction, and somebody said to me earlier on, on one of these comments um, about GB News, uh, entertainment or news? Well, both. And that really is the issue. When somebody, uh, when a newscaster is reading the news, they are, in fact, entertaining. Angela Rippon understood it. Not, not by uh, showing us her legs and dancing, but simply by the poise, by the uh, gravitas of her delivery. It is a performance. It is a performance. And some people are good at it. Some people have charisma. Some people, frankly, don't. Uh, Angela Rippon, she could have read the um, a, a recipe book and it would have given me a lot of entertainment. I would have, uh, I, I, I would have lapped it up. Um, and uh, Hugh Edwards was particularly gifted from that point of view. Uh, I think there are many other people who are gifted as entertainers, even though they are reading or delivering the news. There are some who clearly look as if they're reading the auto cue, and I'm bored almost by the moment that they appear. They can be on ITV, on BBC, on uh, GB News, on Talk TV. Nadine Doris is a very good example, but she is so um, maladroit when it comes to reading the auto cue, that she is faintly funny. And one just watches, uh, longing for the next slip up and, uh, and, and to see the reaction of her guests. And that in itself is entertaining. That in itself makes her presentation sort of worthwhile, uh, like, um, like, like, like watching a car crash. I suppose, though I don't think I really want to spend my time watching car crashes. So just stop oil threaten people's lives. Yes, they do. But at the moment, they are not a prescribed organisation or uh, deemed a terrorist organisation. So therefore, whatever their threats are and whatever their activity may be and their, their various attempts to attract attention, uh... You know, the the, um, the suffragettes were extraordinarily bold and shocking in the way that they uh, pursued their goal. And they went well beyond what Just Stop Oil are doing. And uh, I think the only way to resolve these problems is to talk to people. I think it's right to talk to people. I think Suella Braverman is absolutely wrong to urge the Labour Party not to talk to people. And his permanent private secretary uh, reaching out to just stop oil is the right thing to do. The government, the cabinet minister is responsible and Suella Braverman is definitely one of those responsible. She, she should have been reaching out to just stop oil as she should have been reaching out to Extinction Rebellion. You don't get... You, you, you don't get some sort of disease by talking to somebody that you don't agree with. You might indeed be able to persuade them that they're wrong. But really, you should be listening. So, uh, Suella Brabham should talk to these people or should listen to these people. Uh, not, an, not an Andrea Leadsom type uh, of uh, engagement where she harangues the, um, uh, the person who is in her office, but somebody who listens rare in conservative circles at the moment i know but necessary and if the conservatives won't do it the labor party should or the liberal party people should engage at a top political level 
with these organizations because these organizations, unless we talk to them, are going to continue to walk slowly around London, glue themselves to the roads and make, uh, make, make their point and cause chaos. And we need to listen to these people. And I think their, uh, their, their concerns are valid. How we engage with those concerns, that's another matter. And I think actually both the Labour Party, the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party, all of these parties would accept that the concerns are valid. It's the manner of engagement. So uh, I, I, I just go back to, I, I was just looking at the, at the letter that Suella Brahman sent to Keir Starmer and I cannot get over how rude she is. How rude, how patronising, how condescending, how superior, how snide. That's not the politics of my youth. And I don't think it's politics at all. Politics is about an ability to discuss in a civilised way um, issues of importance with somebody whose, whose views, whose opinion you may not share. It's about living in the city with people who you have very little in common with, with whom you have very little in common. And, um, and it's the difference between city life and village life. And it takes its name from the word, from the Greek word for a city, polis. And we get the word policy and we get the word politeness from the same root. And I think it's of value. I think it's of value to be courteous, to be civilised, to be kind and to listen. And Suella Bravman needs to grow up. And I think given the contempt that she shows in the way she writes that letter, she should start answering her own letters. And she should ensure that letters that are written to her get a response.